Hi, I'm Kate Naito. I'm a certified dog trainer and a certified dog behavior consultant. And today I'm going to show you how to teach your dog to use a ramp. This could be a ramp that goes up and down to furniture, or this could be a ramp that goes into your car. The key to success here is to go at your dog's pace. And what you're going to see first is my dog Beans, who is always afraid of anything new, including the ramp. I start by playing a game of find the treats. And the treats that I'm tossing are around the ramp, but not necessarily on the ramp. I wanna gauge how comfortable she is just getting close to it before I start putting treats on the ramp. So you'll see that I put them around, and then every once in a while I will put a treat on the ramp and I'll see how she takes it. The next one I throw away to give her a little breather. The next one goes on the ramp. She takes it, but she's not super excited to be on the ramp. Notice when I tossed it far, she actually went around the ramp. And there, she doesn't want to go on the ramp to get the treat out of my hand. So that tells me I'm not going to be pushing it. Now here, there's a treat on the ramp. She's afraid to get it, and she's looking to me for help. I'm not going to help her. I'm just going to wait it out and see what happens. I'll let her think it through, and you'll see she gives up. She lies down. So I say, okay, don't worry about it. Go get that treat instead. I send her away, and then I just try again a little bit easier on the ramp, and she eats both treats. So you can see here, it's all about making it easy for the dog. Don't pressure, don't coerce, don't force, don't bribe. Just go slowly, and you'll actually have more success that way. If you have a tentative dog like Beans, I'd like you to have about 75% of your treats off of the ramp and only about 25% of the treats actually on the ramp. Even when I do put them on the ramp at this stage, I'm only asking her to stretch her head over it or maybe put her front two paws on it. Once the dog will put two paws on, then we want to get all four paws onto that ramp. And so this is where I start moving my own body around a little more to encourage the dog to hop on and hop off the ramp. I'm going to continue at this stage with my goal of four paws until I can see that Beans is pretty comfortable. Once I can tell that my dog is getting comfortable being on the ramp for very short periods, now we have to introduce walking along the ramp. And you'll see I'm going to be kind of walking with her a little bit to encourage her to take a few steps onto it. But I'm also not forcing her. I'm letting her go as slowly as she wants. I'll encourage her to get on the ramp. She can have a treat when she's on it. And then I'll toss a treat off of the ramp so she can go and chase that. This is my other dog, Margaret. You can tell the difference because she's got the curly piggy tail. She's much more confident. So you can see her racing back and forth. She thinks this is just a new agility obstacle. And that's fine. If you have a confident dog like this, you can immediately turn the ramp into some sort of play spot where they're uh, running back and forth or maybe they're doing some tricks on the ramp. You can make it a fun place for them to interact with, but you do want to still expose them to the surface of the ramp without the height yet. And now our ramp is set up. I'm going to play a similar game with beans that I did before. I toss a treat away and then I put the next treat barely onto the ramp. She might not even put her paw on it yet, and that's okay. And then I toss a treat away. And then I put the next treat barely on the ramp. I might do a little tap, tap, tap to encourage her to step up on it. And by going slowly, what you'll find is that your dog does build up the confidence to do it all the way on their own when they're ready. And that's what happens with Beans here. I wasn't asking for her to go all the way up, but she did it on her own. And so I give her a big jackpot with several little treats in a row so she knows that that was a really big deal and she did a great job. Like many dogs, Beans has gotten comfortable going up the ramp. And so she'll go up the ramp and get a little treat and then I encourage her to come down the ramp and get a little treat. I'm going to be using my body to block her from jumping off the couch. 
I want to make sure that this is always safe for her. And I'm going to go at her pace. She's a little nervous to go down. So I'm using my body there to make sure she doesn't cheat. And I'm using lots of encouragement. And off she goes. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty good for her, you know, second attempt. And we go up and down a few times, but I'm not going to overdo it, especially for an older dog like her. This is quite a workout in itself. Okay. For Margaret, the younger, more athletic dog, I don't have the same health concerns. However, I don't want her just launching off of the ramp when she goes down. So I'm actually luring her down. I give her a treat at the very bottom of the ramp and that makes her stop at the bottom. Then I might toss another treat to get her completely off of the ramp. And so what that's teaching her is don't just use it like a launching pad, actually walk step by step down the ramp. And from here, it's really just a matter of practice and maintenance. You wanna make sure that the ramp is easily accessible to your dog, meaning it's not in the farthest corner of the couch because dogs usually do look for the most direct path, even if that means they're gonna jump off. Um, you also just wanna make sure that they have enough space to safely get on and off. So of course, please don't leave things on the couch for your dog to trip over, and please don't leave things on the floor near the bottom of the ramp. We want them to feel safe the entire way. For all things dog training, please check out my other videos, my articles, my books, and my interviews. Thanks. <laughs>